left. A field goal will not do it. They've got to think end zone. The crowd just going crazy. The noise level here in the Arnstadion is unbelievable. Second down. Daft, the pressure comes. Daft has time. He's got a swing pass. He's got Aaron Stecker who falls oh. over. And that could oh, be it. They're winding the clock. They're winding the clock. It's not stopping. I don't that think hurts. they're going to get it off. Line Two up. seconds. It's over. It's over. Yeah. What a game. What a win for Berlin. The game is over. What heartbreak for Scotland. Yes, time ran out on the Claymore's bid to go 3-0 last week as Berlin stole their thunder. But revenge can be swift as the Claymore's welcome Berlin to Murrayfield today. And with me is Coach Jim Criner of the Scottish Claymore's. Jim, what have you talked to your team about this week to do differently from last week? Well, this has been a w real week of concentration on number one, execution, trying to do things a little bit better, eliminating penalties that hurt us and giving ourselves a better chance in the passing game. You know, we ran the ball extremely well, but in the fourth quarter, you know, we allowed the pass rush to get to us, and hopefully the addition of Scott Curry will solve a lot of those problems. Thanks, Jim. Now, two games were played yesterday which had a vital impact on today's game. Let's have a look at the highlights from those. Dragons appeared to jump, but no flag. Ball's loose. Barcelona got it. Vince Amy, the defensive end, 98, covers it up at the Rhine 33. Jamie Baisley blitzing. And Graziani is intercepted at the five yard line. To the end zone. Touchdown, Jeff Ogden. What a strike. It's a double coverage. And that's why Chip Beak said that Jeff Ogden is the best receiver in this league. Ball is on the 39-yard line. That's the line of scrimmage. So Rodney Williams is going to put it down at the 47. 46 yard line that would make it 56 yards for four points what a way to finish the half flags are down and he got it now 56 would be the longest field goal in the history of this league and look at danny kite hurt his leg see Danny Kite right here and he's going to be getting all his leg into it actually gets bl blocked right into him the four point field goal is good the half is over so a league record 56 yard field goal makes it 11 nothing back at the 31 of Barcelona Ogden deep Touchdown, Jeff Ogden of the Rhine Fire. Jeff Ogden turned at least three different times there to get under that ball. What great concentration. Well, they're in the end zone. Sean Murray. Barnes all day, deep shot, he's got a man out there, it's Floyd inside the 10 to the nine yard line. Todd Floyd, his buddies call him Pretty Boy. He'll change the play again. Barnes, Floyd, they're gonna give it to him, touchdown, you bet. Go right back to the guy who got you down there. I'll tell you what. Pretty boy Floyd. 
Barnes slant, touchdown, Mario Bailey. Six consecutive weeks, Bailey has scored. Third goal inside the five. Shelley in motion. To Shelley, touchdown, he holds on. <laughs> Couple of touchdowns last week, and he has Amsterdam on the board offensively for the first time in the opening half this year. Boy, did they ever need that. This is a four-point effort by Kleinman, 54 yards. And it's blocked. That is three in two weeks that Rolf Kleinman has had blocked. Hollis moves, and what a grab by Shelley with one hand. Oh, oh my made goodness. the tackle, he reached up and stabbed it like it was a ping pong ball. They lob. Second chance. Stevens, yes. penalty, touchdown. They went right back to him. And L.C. Stevens wasn't denied there. 21, penalties decline, touchdown. All the great quarterbacks I've played with, that's what they would do with a young guy. Kleinman has had three blocked in the last two weeks. You said he might be thinking about it. I guarantee you he's thinking about it. He's human. 27 yards away. Good snap, good hold, and Kleinman buries it. We're tied at 17 with 1.56 to play. He can blow an opportunity. And you know what? He wants another timeout. They get it snapped. This is for the win. A lot of leg. A lot of distance. He's got, got it. it. Amsterdam is won. 49-yard <laughs> field goal, Jose Cortez. Amsterdam, for the first time in their history, has won in Frankfurt. And Dick Curl irate. He was trying to get another timeout. Oh, man. First win in Frankfurt. The sun is shining, the sky is blue here in Edinburgh. Good job we weren't here this time last week because the picture was very different. This place was underwater. One of the local rivers flooded, burst its banks, and that's the best part of three foot of water under there. And uh, DJ Johnson wanted to go fishing, but uh, by the time we got here... Hey, I'm a Kentucky boy, so that had a nice little fishing hole for us. Absolutely. Well, Jim Kreiner was delighted to be spending last week in Berlin. He's also delighted to have Berlin that he's got this week as well because he does feel that his team really suffered some bad breaks last week in Berlin and uh, he said he doesn't normally like to meet the team back to back but on this occasion he feels very differently. The Claymores won the toss, will receive. Their deep man there you can see is Dion Mitchell. Damon Gibson is the other deep man and Jarrett Holmes who's got a good leg will get this game underway. And it's Mitchell who fields at the five, spins away from tackles, looks for a hole, and gets himself to the 28-yard line. Jörg Heckenbach will make the stop. The offense for the Scottish Claymores, Kevin Daft, has looked impressive. Six touchdown passes, he's only thrown one interception. That was on the very first play. The offensive line greatly enhanced by the arrival of Scott Curry at left tackle. Scott Cooper and Damon Gibson, the wideouts, Willie Tate, the H back, Ricky Brady at tight end, and the danger man, Aaron Stecker, the running back. The ball at the 28-yard line, first down for the Claymores. Touch the heads, uh, action. Buys Daft a lot of time, and he goes downtown looking for Silicio Sanford, and it's overthrown. He was working on the safety, Kevin Peoples. Let's have a look at the defense for the Berlin Thunder, a bend but don't break group with great ends on in Mike Sutton and Jonathan Brown, Greg Wilkins and TJ Fryer anchor the middle. And linebacker Lamont Green, Richard Hogans, who's the leader, and Joe Phipps. And in the secondary, Dwayne Butler and Troy Saunders at the corners, Richard Yancey, the German, and Billy Gustin are the two safeties. Set, 191! You might have had a chance to stop. So, second down after the incompletion. This time they go back to their bread and butter. And Stecker will pick up a couple, but no more. They gang tackled him. 
Well, they tried to stretch the field on first down, and on second down, it was back to basics. That's a good thing to do. You know, Aaron Steckert has been the man over here. You hand the ball off to him, he's gotten yards every time. So if, if you're uh, Berlin, you're going to probably come in thinking Stecker's going to carry this game. Scotland did a great job of opening up, throwing it downfield, you know, back the Berlin defense up a little bit, get them thinking this is not going to be a one-dimensional game. So third and long. Both teams horrible with third down conversions last week. Dak will throw and the pressure comes and it's picked up. Dak has time. And he has a man. Great diving effort from Scott Cooper, the veteran Glaswegian. That's as good a catch as he's made because that thing was moving. And that was a nice play right there, you know, and that's what Daff does. Daff hangs there in the pocket. He's been a little shaky on his read sometimes, but the guy will stand in the pocket and hit his receivers. This is just a great job sitting there, being calm, waiting for the receiver to open it up, and then hit him when he comes open. Well, they're ruling it incomplete after that. Oh, that looked pretty good to me. Well, well. And that's not been met with much enthusiasm here at Murrayfield. And I must admit, you look at that, it's... Looks a tough call on Scott Cooper. Yeah, very tough call. So, the first break goes Peter Vasi's way. And uh, that's uh, Aaron Stecker. Ooh, that's something. Yeah. That's something the Claymores can't afford to have right there. The punting unit on. Donnie Caldwell waits at his 24 yard line for the Berlin Thunder. Still didn't see what happened to Stecker. You see Cooper open up. You see Drath, uh, Dath drop back and hit him. And, uh, well. I tell you, it looked pretty good to me. John Ballantyne's kick was up and gone. And Caldwell fields at his own 16. And he's got some room in front of him. Only Ballantyne can get him, and the big Australian stops him. John Ballantyne played Aussie rules football in his native Melbourne, and it showed. Uh, he's Meanwhile, we have a, a Claymore down hurt as well. You know, the special teams did a great job last week, or you can say the special teams did a poor job last week. They did a great job running the ball, but poor job tackling. And it's the same thing. Caldwell just takes the ball, goes up the middle, bursts out to the side. And I'll tell you what, that's a great job by Ballantyne to get in that tackle. And the pitch back is to the dangerous Brian Shea. And Shea will pick up four before he's tackled by John Hess. The strength of the Scotland defense is their ability to stop the run, and it starts up front with a group that calls themselves the Hounds of Scotland. Chris Ward and Mike Mason at the ends, Dingle and Tom Tovo getting the starting side. Glover, Finkis and Hess are the linebackers, and a stretch secondary with Blackwell and Hawthorne with McElmurray and Ray inside. McClellan was due to start, Nate Dingle He's the first guy to hit Brian Shea, then he's gang tackled and may lose yardage. Ryan Taylor, I think it was, that finished him off. Like you said, that's the strength of Claymore's defense. You know, the up front, these guys can fill those holes. They get powerful, good leverage. And so far, they've carried the, they've carried the Claymore's throughout the season. But they're hurting, DJ. They are definitely hurting. Corey Blackwell, who shouldn't really be starting at all. He's only in because of the injury to Central McClellan. Interesting to see how he stands up, and it's third and long. They go on the draw play. Shea just blasts his way up the middle. And Brian Shea describes himself as a bowling ball of a player. Chris Bain it was, the safety that made the stop, but he just bowled his way for extra yardage there. Yeah, he calls himself the bowling ball, and I tell you what, there's a lot of pins on that play. He just takes the ball right up the middle, and there's no faking, no dodging. It's like, I'm going for this first down straight up the middle. Try to stop me if you can. Working behind the big block from Brian Waters, the center. We go, Lee, 50 Lee. And it's a first down to the 37-yard line. And pressure will throw on first down. And the swing pass is to Shea. And Shea can't get, does manage to get past Phil Glover. And a pick up additional yardage to the 30-yard line. That'll bring up second down and three. And Brian Shea, in many ways, is to the Berlin offense what Aaron Stecker is to the Scotland offense. That's right. I mean, Shea can catch. He can run the ball. He's one of those kind of guys that in the fourth quarter, you know he's still going to be in there, still running hard. This guy does not get tired. If there was a fifth quarter, he'd still be in there playing. He would. And it was his running in the fourth quarter that was crucial in the win last week. Three wide receivers and Shea alone in the backfield on second down. And a quick swing pass to Tabidi Davis. And Davis will be close to first down yardage. And from that mark, it looks like he may have got it. Hawthorne and Michael Murray combining 
to push him out of bounds and they'll move the chains. I think what it looks like from Berlin is uh, if Claymores are going to sit back and play deep and play soft on us, we'll just hit them underneath. We're going to take what they get. You hear that uh, that uh, scenario all the time. Take what they give you, and that's what you're showing you right here. If Claymore is going to drop back and give Berlin the shorter routes, they'll take them. Jim Kreiner will know that Central McClellan has a left knee strain and will be reevaluated at half time. He will not play in the first half. They haven't tested the fitness of Blackwell at left corner yet. Presser will throw on first down, gets hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. God, absolutely. Who clobbered? I think it was Jabbar Threets that came storming through up the middle. Rashid Simmons was there as well. Those are the hounds. And I tell you what, that's what guys like Eric Kresser like. You know, these guys have been sitting on the bench in the NFL playing second team. They need to get hit. They need to know what it feels like to get hit in game time situations. And I tell you what, you know, he, he takes it. He'll take a hit, get right back up, and come back and start playing. Second down. The ball at the 24. Back on the ground, Shea. Well, get a lot. Phil Glover, the man from the Tennessee Titans, was there to make the stop. Glover, a quietly impressive member of this Scottish defense, really does get the job done quietly. He does get the job done. You hear about the hounds up front because they bark and they make a lot of noise and they always get the press. But you guys, guys like Glover that come in there, do a solid job. And they're a big, you know, big cause of why this defense is so good also. Third and long. And this is where Peter Vars will be making sure his team protects the football. They had a couple of costly turnovers in this kind of territory last week. They'll throw. And Presser puts it up and it's picked off. Blaine McElmurray. And McElmurray's got a lot of room in front of him. And gets into Berlin territory. Excellent play by McElmurray. He had Excellent two play. picks last week. He loves playing the Thunder, this guy. He does what a safety is supposed to do. Stay calm, read the play, know where everything's going, and then take a jump on it. You see right here, Presser just drops back. McMurray's right, Michael Murray's right there in the middle. He just steps, reads it, steps in front of it, takes it back. And that's a great play by a safety. You know, when you're a safety, you're not going to play, you're not going to have too many one-on-one -on -one coverages. What you're going to do is you're going to drop back in the middle of the field, find out where everything's going and so sort it out. Well, Blaine Michael Murray was only stopped from going all the way by an ankle tap from the other 45, Brian Shea. And I tell you, Peter Vars will be going crazy about that play. You know, what can they do? Play action. And Daft buys some time, oh. goes downtown again, looks for the big tight end, Ricky Brady. It's incomplete. That was a high risk pass. Troy Saunders was there to break it up. Well, that had interception written all over. Yeah, it sure did. That's one of those things you have to hold on to right there. You see, it's a, a fake double reverse. Sit back there in the pocket. Even faked out the cameraman on that. And just drop back and, and uh, try to throw Ooh. as deep as you can. Unfortunately, he threw in the middle of three players, and uh, someone should have come up with that ball. So the second now, well, they tried to stretch the field a couple of times here in the first quarter. Hasn't worked for them yet. Stecker's back in the game. He seems to be fine. And gets the carry here. And a good open field tackle from Greg Wilkins, the big defensive tackle. Well, Blaine Michael Murray had a couple of picks last week. That one against Eric Presser. Right place, right time. Just to prove it wasn't a flick, he did it again. And there's something about playing the Thunder that brings out the best in the man from the Jacksonville Jaguars. I tell you, that's what a safety does. You read it, and you're the safety valve back there. You are the safety, and that's what you do. You step in front of it, pick it off, save your corners. So another third down for the Pumas. Daffield throws the swing pass to Stecker. Now Stecker's got a blocker in front of him and gets extra yardage as a result of that block. He's pushed out by the safety, Billy Gustin but will pick up seven yards and a first down. Hey, uh, Stecker's style re reminds me a lot of uh, Jamal Anderson. I mean, you can't compare, you know, one guy's an all-pro back and, and one guy's over here in the world, uh, NFL Europe, but I tell you, they have similar styles in that they glide. You know, Stecker's a glider and so is Jamal, and they both have excellent hands. These guys, you can give it to them. They're real patient when they run. You know, they, they set you up, they, they set up the holes, and they break the outside. They're both calm, good runners. And a physical, physical block from Damon Gibson up front. Blue and red hot. There's movement at the line, but no flags, and Daft is in trouble, and there was a swarm of people there. And there definitely seemed to be a bit of movement at the line there, and you can hear the fans saw it. I 
looked like the right defensive end moved pretty early, but no flags. He's right here, and let's see if he jumps. Right, Cedric Clark. Cedric Clark. Oh, it looks like he got off pretty early. Um, yeah, I, I think I think on that one he did jump off early, and uh, they should have gotten that one. Jim Kreiner wasn't happy with the officiating last week either. Daft on the bootleg. He's got a lot of work to do. Ooh. And he paid the price. Yes, Kevin did. Peoples uh -huh. came up and clobbered him. Got a penalty on that one. You can't hit the quarterback out of bounds. I mean, from here we can't really tell what it was, but a lot of flags are flying on that play. You see Daft, it looks like a broken play. He just runs around to the end, tries to get as many yards as he can before getting out of bounds, and uh, he took a pretty good pop. Oh, and the ref might have thrown a flag because he got knocked down too. Number 27, defense, 15-yard penalty. Well, Touchdown. I guess these things balance themselves out. There was a false start that they missed, and that one was, well, if you're a Claymore fan, you'll say it was a late hit, of course, but uh, I don't think anybody will complain. Justice done there. Uh, defenders never think it's a late hit. Offensive guys always think it's a late hit, so no telling on that one. Bottom line, first down at the 15. Claymore's trying to take advantage of that Michael Murray interception. Again, Clark seemed to move early, but Steck has got a big hole in front of him and is inside the five. And is brought down right at the goal line, inside the one. Just a, a nice up the middle play. Stecker's calm, he's patient, he reads his hole, breaks back through the middle, and then he just uses his power to burst up through there and, and break a couple of tackles. Leftridge and Peoples made the stop, but it's first and goal inside the one. Might as well reward Stecker with a touchdown right here. Well, the eye formation, Ben Snell is in the backfield with Stecker. As the heavy mob come out. And the give is to Stecker, who looks to turn the corner and gets in. So the turnover produces a touchdown for the Scottish Claymores. Nice play, just a sweep to the outside. Everyone gets their blocks, and uh, you know if, you, if you're the outside, the outside backer on defense or the defensive end, you have to maintain your leverage out there. You can't let anyone get wider than what you are. And somehow everyone got walled inside, and Stecker just bounced it around to the outside. Easy touchdown. Rob Hart has never missed a PAT in a three-year career. And that's his 59th in a row. So Aaron Stecker with his first rushing touchdown of the season gives the Claymores the lead. On a running play like this, someone has spill and someone has force. This guy right here is always supposed to spill it out to the outside guy. Dwayne Butler gets walled inside somehow, and that's something you can't afford to happen. You know, when the outside back or the, or the uh, defensive end spills it to you, you have to be the one that forces everything back inside. And that time, the force guy got out leveraged. Dwayne Butler got out leveraged. Easy touchdown. Well, Aaron Stecker had three receiving touchdowns. That's his first rushing touchdown. And the line drive from Rob Hart is fielded. And again, they'll get pretty decent field position of the Berlin Thunder. To the 41 yard line, Deshaun Jackson covered that one up. And then Eric Cressa will try again. And Peter Vass, I'm sure, will be very frustrated at what happened on that last series. He said, anytime you get inside the 25, that's points on the board. That's You've got to protect the, the ball. That's right. And they made the same mistake that they made last week. Between the 25 and 35, he wants to be a little conservative because he doesn't want to lose uh, field goal position. But once he gets inside the 25, he feels he can air it out a little bit more and still keep uh, field goal position. Down. Play action. Presser throws, and he can't find Tuan Mitchell. In fact, he could find Mitchell, but Mitchell couldn't find the ball. Yep. It's one of those things you just don't hold on to the ball. Got to keep your eye on it and think about catching the ball before you run with it. It's a well-executed play as well, as Mitchell had no one within five yards of him. Saw the play. Presser drops back. Mitchell's wide open. If he'd have caught that, that's going to be easy 10 or 15 yards. Instead, it's second down. Back on the ground, Brian Shea can't turn the corner. 
tripped up from behind. Michael Mason, who was the first round draft pick of the Berlin Thunder a year ago. And the Hounds' tails are up here. Yeah, the Hounds, they seem to be fired up today. That's one thing they wanted to do, is come out, come out of the box and, and, and uh, play hard. Last time they get a little stalled and, you know, they started off slow last game. This game, hey, they're on. Shea loses a yard, third down and 11 from the 40. And they have three wide receivers to the right up top. And Cressa goes the other way and he's picked off again. This time it's drawn Hawthorne. And Hawthorne is stopped at the 30 by Shea. Shea the tackler again, but Cressa is having a nightmare. When you throw the out route like that, especially a deep out route, you have to have some zip on the ball. If not, a good cornerback's going to step in front of him and pick it off. Cresser drops back, has a receiver open on the sideline. The ball sort of floated. Uh, Hawthorne stepped right in front of it, and it's an easy pick. You have to have some zip on the ball when you're throwing the ball that far from the middle of the field to the sideline. It has to have zip. Well, these two teams at opposite ends of the turnover table as it is. And the gulf between them will have widened after those two picks. Now, Daft looking to make him pay, going long again, looking for Scott Cooper. It's incomplete. Cooper, Cooper was looking for a flag, but Chris Cummins had the coverage. Looked like pretty good coverage on this. You see Dwayne Hawthorne right here. He played for the Cowboys, and you know he's one of the guys that actually played. He was in the game. He competed, got some interceptions, and uh, you know we got to cover a lot of their games this year. And Hawthorne's a player. He's a definite player, and he's the kind of guy that's going to benefit from being over here. He's going to tune his skills, be back, be back in the NFL. Well, he said he's happy to be here as well, just to play that corner position. Second down. Stecker runs into a whole bunch of trouble and still makes positive yardage out of it. Richard Hogan's the middle linebacker eventually on the stop. He loses his helmet and gains four yards. It's a very relaxed runner. When you see him run, he just glides. You know, he's never in a hurry. He's not choppy. He's not, uh, it doesn't seem like he's being very aggressive. But this guy, he picks and chooses his holes wisely. And that's why he always ends up with five or six yards every carry. And there's the man who's given the Claymore good field position again, Dwan Hawthorne. Two picks already for this Claymore secondary. Willie Tate, the H-back, goes in motion on third down. That feels the pressure, rolls away, looks end zone, has a man. Touchdown, Scotland, Ricky Brady. As simple as that. When the quarterback gets flushed out of the pocket, you have to stay back there on a the man. You see someone running free, he's got to grab him. Staff drops back, gets flushed out of the pocket, does a great job of just looking downfield, knowing where everyone is, and just hurls it. See right here, he gets flushed out of the pocket, goes to the side, sees Brady floating alone by himself in the end zone, and just throws it out there. So, two turnovers, two touchdowns, two extra points from Rob Hart. That score gave Scotland a comfortable cushion. Then, unbelievably, this interception by Hawthorne, the Claymore's third in the first quarter, set them up as time expired. Let's pick it up at the top of the second on the Claymore's ensuing possession. So will they play safe and just convert, or will they go downtown? <laughs> that rolls, has his man. It's complete to Tremaine Allen, who gets just enough for first down yardage. Donnie Caldwell, the nickelback coming up and making the stop. But it's a first down for the Claymores. Uh, if you're a Berlin defender on that play, you have to breathe, breathe a sigh of relief because, uh, you know, when a team has it go. second and short, they can pretty it's much up. do anything. Go downfield, run in reverse, do anything. It's, it's almost a, a throwaway play. Well, you know, DJ, for all of the, the, the problems that the Berlin offense has had, this defense is yet to make a play as well. It's time for them to step up. First down. That's the way to do it if you're a Berlin <laughs> defender. Cedric right, Clark wrapping up we're done, man. Let's Aaron Stecker. You, yeah, that was a play right there. That was long overdue for Peter Vars. Cedric Clark is one of those guys that can play any position on the field. You know, they, they have him at, uh, he can play outside back or he can play defensive end. He's one of those kind of guys that you put him on the field, he'll find work. And that's what you want to do, just find work. He comes right through the Bye, line, Mark. wraps Stecker up before he can get started. 
Honda needs a stand. Daft feels the pressure on it. Oh, oh, that was close to a pick. That was that bouncing was around. Peoples sniffed the interception after it bounced off the hand of Jonathan Brown. I think that's the first time we've called his number today. Uh, if Peoples catches that one, then it's, uh, yeah, I think that's going to be six right there. I don't think anyone's going to catch him on that. Snell just does a flare pass out to the side. You know, Jonathan Brown gets his hand on it. And as you, if you're a defender, that's what you want to do. You want to read it, get your hand up, and knock it down. Jonathan Brown ran a riot last week, especially in the second half. But Scott Curry is now in at left tackle. And that battle will be interesting. Third down. Daft will throw. That's his man, Silesio Sanford, who got in ahead of Chris Cummings, who seems to slip. And that's another big play for the Scottish Claymore's offense. It looked like Cummings fell down on that play. You know, and that's, that's bad news when you're a cornerback. You, you, you step back there and you slip, and there, you just all of a sudden think, uh-oh, where's my man? He's right here. He backs up, the play starts. Play starts, he backpedals, he reads it. He goes to break on the ball and just falls down. Like I said, when you're a cornerback, that's a scary feeling because you don't know where it's going to go after that. A penalty against the defense as well for an inadvertent face mask. Pushes it inside the 20. So the bad break's coming in bunches for Berlin right now. First down at the 17 for the Claymores. Daft. Hit as he throws and it's oh. almost picked off again. Joe Phipps nearly had a piece of it. And those are the ones you have to come up with. I mean, it, Jonathan Brown, it was that applied the heat. You know, Daft is taking a pounding back there. Looks like Cornell Green, I think the right tackle that is down on the floor at the moment. You're right. On that play, Scott Cooper was wide open in the end zone. Daft couldn't get to him. Not Daft's fault. He couldn't get to him because the rush was in there. But I'll tell you what, he had a little more time. Cooper wide open on the corner pattern. So as Green gets treatment, we're going to take a short break. We'll be back to Murrayfield in just a couple of moments. Nick, you see Cornell Green right here. And if you're an offensive lineman, this is something that's very scary. You're in there blocking, and, and from your blind side, from your blind side, someone rolls on the back of your legs. I mean, it, it seems like a simple injury, but more people get hurt that way. And it's, uh, you know, you just hope it's not a knee thing. And right here, you see Scott Cooper who, uh, you know, if the quarterback would have had more time on this, he is wide open on his corner pattern. And that is as, about as open as you can get. But like I said, Daft didn't have time to throw that ball, so it's not his fault. It was Jonathan Brown making the tackle on Daft that rolled into the back of Green. And it brings down, brings up a third down. And on the draw, they'll play it safe, and Stecker can't get much. He's wrapped up We're by done. Brown again. We're done. The ball it's squirts over. loose, but it's, uh, the play was whistled dead. There you go, sir. It looks like they're trying to keep the ball in the middle of the field in case they do have to kick a field goal. It's, you know, it's already set right there in the middle. Straight shot down the, down the alley. Well, Jason Tenner has checked in at right tackle. Now, I'll tell you what, you know, Berlin has to step up right here. Their defense, they've had, they had an opportunity to make some plays. They had, they've dropped two interceptions, and that's one thing that Peter Voss talked about yesterday. It's time for the defense to take it to the next level. There you go. Well, we're hearing a lot from Jonathan Brown. He's made some plays, but... His teammates haven't been able to capitalize. Now Daft feels some more pressure. Mike Sutton coming up the middle and he gets rid of it. He's got a wide out man in the end zone. Touchdown, Scotland. And this is turning into a cakewalk for the Scottish Claymores. And Ricky Brady celebrates his second of the ball game. The Berlin defense looks like they're almost totally broken down. Daft steps back and gets flushed out of the pocket. Like I said earlier, when the quarterback gets flushed, you see him get flushed out here. When he gets flushed, you have to stick on a man. You have a big tight end running down there by himself. I mean, if it's a little five foot two guy, you might not see him. When you got a big six five tight end running down there, you have to see him and stick on him. So two more touchdown passes from Kevin Daft. Rob Hart attempts to make here, it man. a 21 point ball game, which he does. And we got a flag on the field. Mike Sutton might get assessed here for running into the kicker. Everything going against Berlin right yeah. now. Let's see what this is. Well, it goes against the Claymores. 
Certainly a bit of contact there between Sutton and Hart, but uh, the start is assessed. Looks like they're going to re kick it. Tell you what, on that touchdown pass, that illegal formation. Six illegal men formation. on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty, re kick. You know, in football, you can't have all your guys on the line of scrimmage. And all these guys right here, they are on the line of scrimmage. These guys, your helmet right here has to be backed up in the numbers of the guy inside of you. And that's how you determine if, if people are on the line or not. Well, they came off of that one as well. But it's still good. The 21 point lead for the Scottish Claymores over the Berlin Thunder, courtesy of Ricky Brady's second touchdown catch of the ball game. Dunn and Shea are deep. Hart kicks a shallow kick that will be fielded at the 17 by Dunn. And Dunn looking to give Berlin the spark. And he gets to his own 43 yard line before he's pushed out of bounds by Silicio Sanford. So you can keep up with everything that's going on in the world of NFL Europe on NFLEurope.com. That's online, of course. This week, DJ Johnson will give you his exclusive guide to things you can do on a quiet Sunday night in Edinburgh. I am an expert. And the change of quarterback has been made. Scott Milanovic comes in. Now, Peter Vars tells us he doesn't like to flip-flop his quarterbacks. He doesn't mind giving Milanovic a bit of time to see the playing time to see what he can do. But you do feel after three interceptions, this one's been forced upon him. Yeah, you really do have to do this. He doesn't like to change after an interception especially, but you have to get Milanovic in there at this time. And Milanovic gets things started pretty effectively to Robert Scott, who will pick up eight yards with a quick swing pass. John Hess, the outside linebacker, pushing Scott out of bounds. We'll bring up second down and short and if the Berlin Thunder are going to make a game of this they've got to start putting up some points fast yeah you don't want to let this uh, game get too far out of hand and right now it is out of hand you know, 21 to nothing you got to get something on the boards right now second down and short Milanovic will go on the ground Brian Shea all right, we're done, man. Will be very close to first down yardage. Jabbar Threets makes the stop. Yeah, Berlin, I mean, you know, you hate right. to say it so early right. on, but right. the game just Purple. keeps slipping away, and right. it comes to that point where it gets too far away and you can't get it back. And those are the numbers that you love if you're a Claymores fan and that Peter Vass will be going crazy about. Three turnovers, three touchdowns. What? But a first down after the short yardage dive from Brian Shea. Antoine Mitchell has checked into the lineup. Milanovic will throw after the play action. The pressure comes. Threets came after him. He just had to get rid of it. That's a good job get rid of the ball. Whenever a quarterback drops back like that and has that much time to throw and can't throw it, it means there's usually pretty good coverage downfield. The defensive backs must have done uh, a pretty good job of locking up their receivers. You see Hawthorne and Dunn right here. And, uh, he gets turned a little bit, and, but he gets right back into the play. Everyone was covered on that play. Quarterback had to throw it out of bounds. And the injured, the so-called injured Tory Blackwell, well, his foot is holding up pretty well right now. Remember, they weren't even expecting him to play. On first down, Brian Shea blasts his way up the middle. We're done. 13 yards, Michael Murray and Bain, the two safeties coming up and making the stop, but Shea just popped out of that like a... Like a, like a cannonball out of a gun. Yeah, for Shea, that's his type of play. Just straight up the middle. I don't have to make a move. I'm just going to run up there, and if someone's standing in my way, I'll try to run over you. And Shea's one of those kind of guys who is used to running. He put up some astronomical figures in college. I think he's the all-time, all-purpose yardage gainer in NCAA history. Owns a bunch of records, as you say, DJ. They count for nothing here, though. First down, Milanovic will throw. Pressure comes. He's down. Sacked. Ryan Taylor. Tell you what, these uh, this Claymore defense, they're getting in the backfield. They are getting in the backfield. They're coming through there. See them right here. The, the, the ball snapped, and, and the Taylor just comes right up through the middle. Running back tries to cut him and you know, barely breaks his stride. Comes right in there, gets a sack. Seven-yard loss, and it does seem on every series that somebody's coming through almost unblocked. And it's making life difficult for these Berlin Thunder quarterbacks. 
Holby! Milanovic rolls and runs for his life. There you go. Phil Glover eventually runs him out of bounds. He did not get back to the original line of scrimmage, but will still pick up another six. That'll bring up third down and 11. He picked up a pretty good chunk right there. Like you said, still a long way to go. He drops back, and once again, the Scotland uh, defensive line just comes right through there, just pouring through there like water. Milanovic is forced to run it, and he gets a pretty good chunk and gets out of bounds. They're running right at the moment, the Hounds. Third down and 11, and the pressure really building on the Thunder here. Draw play again, Shea, they went it this time. Brought him down, Chris Bain came up from safety, Chris Ward came back from outside defensive end. Michael Mason was in on the tackle as well. Pretty conservative on that play. I think they just wanted to keep it in the middle of the field and try to get some points out of this. Try for a field goal. You can't throw it worse than that. Well, it's a long one, but that isn't going to bother Jarrett Holmes, who booted a 50-yarder worth four points last week. This will be 47. Norman with the hole, and that's drifting and drifting in. And it's good. And meanwhile, Jarrett Holmes is hurt. Well, last night, Danny Kite kicked a 50-yarder, 56-yarder for Ryan Fire and was hit and knocked out of the game. Let's hope history isn't repeating itself here. There's the collision. Yeah. Michael Mason just comes right there through the middle. And you know, when you're a kicker, you're vulnerable because after you kick, you're just standing there and you have your plant foot on the ground. And you know, when people coming in trying to rush, they're not trying to roll into you, but their momentum sometimes just carries you right through. You see the kick comes, Mason comes through there, he can't stop. And uh boy, hit his leg from the outside in, and uh, that didn't look too good right there. The Claymores had to punt on their next possession, so let's rejoin the action on the Thunder's ensuing possession. The pressure comes from Marcus Ray, but he manages to get it off Milanovic, but it's incomplete. I think Milanovic saw Ray coming through unblocked and said, I'm getting rid of this thing now. Oh, that's a nightmare if you're a quarterback. To see someone come through there unblocked, you know, especially... You know, especially if it's a, if it's a defensive back. The defensive backs are a lot faster. You see Marcus Ray coming here, dead shot. So that's something you hate to see. The linemen are a little bit slower when they're coming in, but when a defensive back has a, a running start, that's pretty good speed coming at you. And a guy like Marcus Ray who just loves to hit quarterbacks. It's a long way for Milanovic and the Thunder in every sense. The swing pass to Robert Scott gets him nothing. Matt Finkus was the first man easy, there. Man, easy. Excellent easy. read by Finkus. Excellent read. It's a nice safe play by Berlin just to get the ball out there. What you want to do, it's a short pass. You get the ball in the hands of the receiver and you let him throw the fakes and, and uh, make some yardage on that. But Finkus read it perfectly and did a great job of breaking on the ball, keeping his leverage on the ball, and making the tackle. And yeah, that's not an easy thing to do for uh, a linebacker in the open field. And that's sometimes what makes a linebacker your ability to tackle in the open field. Well, third and long from their own 11-yard line for the Thunder. Trips to the left. And Milanovic will go to the left. He's got a receiver. But Tabidi Davis is wrapped up short. Hawthorne and Tarver made sure of that. Now the punting unit out for the Thunder. I suppose the good news for Berlin there, they didn't turn it over. Yeah, that's true. That's a bad that's a area to turn it over right there. You turn it over right there, it's either going to be a run back for, uh, for an interception or you know, it's an easy field position when they get the ball on offense. Well, Damon Gibson will handle punt return chores. And whatever happens right here, they're going to have an excellent field position anyways. Mormon tries the fake. And they've got the Claymore stone cold. Oh, that was a gutsy call from Peter Vass. That was a gutsy call, and I tell you what, that was a great, great call. I mean, they didn't expect that at all. You're, you're pushed back there in your own territory. Nice. I mean, you're, you're down by 18 points. You just don't expect something like this. And well, they sealed it <laughs> off as well. <laughs> that was a pretty good run, too. What was that about good field position for the Claymores? Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
Boy, that was nice. I tell you what, the special teams coach is going to be pretty hot on that. They always tell you don't, you know, you don't want to abandon the line until the ball is kicked. And that time they didn't wait until the ball was kicked. Brian Mormon from the Seattle Seahawks showing a clean pair of heels there, and the Thunder keep their drive alive. Milanovic has time. Has Tuan Mitchell who holds on this time, and Mitchell gets an extra effort that will put him out of bounds right at the first down marker. Wayne McElmurray eventually coming up and making the stop, and they're moving the chains. As you see Tuan Mitchell right here. The ball snapped, he gets an outside release, just does a shallow route across the field. They hit him in stride. McElmurray pushes him out of bounds. It's a nice safe play, gets you some yards, get out of bounds. Just a hint of a change of direction here. Sounds like it. Change of momentum, rather, excuse yeah. me. And they're in Scotland territory. Um, this one's blown dead. Because we're at the two-minute warning. That's the two-minute warning. Jim Kreiner, coach of the Claymores on the left. Peter Vass, his Berlin counterpart on the right. Just made the call of the game so far, yeah. Peter Vass, with that uh, fake punt. Hey, that, that was a great play. I mean, no one expected it. I didn't expect it at all, and uh, they ran it to perfection. You know, this, this is where it becomes a chess match. Well, with two minutes left, the Thunder are 46 yards away from the end zone, and they send out the four-wide receiver package. On first down, play action. Milanovic is flushed out, rolls, fires, has his man. It's complete to Beedy Davis. A 17-yard gain. Hurley Tarver made the stop. First down. Yes. Defensive line right here did a great job of flushing the quarterback out of the pocket. I think both lines have done a good job of this today. Milanovic steps back. Before he has time to set up, he gets flushed right out. He does a good job of just getting to the corner, finding an open man, and hit him in stride. Clock continues to run. Berlin continue to drive. Milanovic will throw again. Swings it out to Shea. Now, this is where Shea can be dangerous. He just runs out of room. Corey Blackwell and Chris Bain combining to run him out of bounds. That will stop the clock with a minute 18 remaining after a pickup of four. When I mean, you have a guy like Shea on your team, that's a, that's a good play for him. You just swing him out to the side, throw the ball to him. See, and, that, uh, that's exactly what it was on the He has a couple yards in between him and the defender the to do some work and then just the power ahead. Oh, a touchdown here, if they can get it, puts the thunder back in this thing. When it looked at one point as if they were going to be blown away. Second down. He'll throw again, the pressure came. Wow, Chris Bain. The former Atlanta Falcon came in like a guided missile. Yes, he did. And I tell you what, that's what I was saying earlier about being a quarterback. You hate to see a full speed defensive back coming off the side. And Bain is a hitter. Number 67, offense, five yard penalty, still second down. Michael Edwards is assessed. You know, Bain is a definite hitter. We talked to Bain yesterday. And he's the quietest, most modest guy you could meet, isn't he, as yeah. well? Yeah, the guy's quiet, and, and, and when he gets on the field, it's just like, you know, it's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And I think what it is, though, he's so calm and quiet because he's saving up that energy so he can hit someone. A guy that sat out the whole of last year after being released by the Falcons and said, well, I'm coming over to Europe because I just want to play. Guy loves football. Second down. Milanovic is still in there despite the hit. And he'll throw. And he's just incomplete. Anthony Ladd was the intended receiver. Ladd had coverage with Blackwell. That will bring up another tricky situation for the Thunder. Third and long. Right here, you see Ladd, he just comes across. You know, they're in a bunch route, so you know no one really knows who the, who's covering who. They throw the ball out there, and you know, unfortunately, it's incomplete. Well, there's the bunch formation again. And timeout called by Milanovic. The play clock was winding down. So Scott Milanovic will go over and talk this over.
with his head coach Peter Vars, and with a little bit of luck, we'll be able to listen into that conversation. They weren't running the safety free. I think they doubled this guy over here last time. I, was Robert open last time down the middle of the field? I think the safety rolled up to the middle. He did roll, but then he rolled over the top of it, I think. Okay. I won't swear to it. I just watched the replay real quick. I got you. Well, you got here, oh, okay. All right, here we go. Smash straight. Slots over left, smash straight. Well, he's called a smash straight on that. And usually a smash route is where a receiver just comes off the line, go, basically jogging. They really tell you to jog, almost go as slow as you can, and then burst across the middle. So we'll see if their they're smash is the same. Yeah, that, that's the basic smash route in the, you know, throughout football. Well, that's the same formation. A bunch route. Third down. Play clock. Down to six. Milovich. Throws, puts it up in the air. He's got a man again. Yeah. They keep it alive. Tabidi Davis pushed out by Hawthorne and McElmurray. And Davis is the go-to guy in this second quarter. You know, Frankfurt lined up in a bunch route on that. You have uh, Tabidi Davis, excuse me, you have Tabidi Davis right here. And what happens is when you're in a bunch route, people don't know who to cover. You see right there, he just runs free. Defensive backs drop back. They don't know who's covering who. And that's one of those things you have to be very, very disciplined on when someone's in a bunch route. You have to know if you're in zone, if you're in a man, and who has who. Well, they're inside the five. They're just over a minute left, so they've got every option open to them now. Milanovic looks to throw. Broken up in the end zone. Hawthorne. That's a great play by Hawthorne right there. Last week, he got beat on the slant route, but uh, Damon Dunn dropped the ball. On this one, he reads it well. One on one with Dunn, gets the collision, follows him, reads the ball, steps in front of it, gets his hand on the ball. Excellent play. That's all you can ask out of the defensive back. Second down and goal. Just over a minute left. And the timeout called. I had seven seconds left on the play clock when Milanovic called that timeout. So he will go to. Head coach Peter Vars once again. And we will try and listen in. It's 2 1 techniques, right? No. Okay, he, he can, well, here, let's do this. Let's go right over. All right, we're right over Frisco. Let's go, okay? Get with Damon. All right, if you have the fade backside, you got the fade. If not, we go Frisco. Okay? So don't have him, run, have him run the thing you had him run last week. The one step inside and then fade. If you think you have it, great. We got second down. There you go. Get firm, firm, firm. They're going to try right to get right over Frisco. On this play, they're going to try to get number 81, uh, Damon Dunn, on a fade route. And what a fade route is, the receiver is going to come off the line, basically take one step to the inside and just fade himself to the outside. It's almost like a glide to the outside, and the quarterback wants to throw it over his outside shoulder. What happens is it's hard for the defensive back to react to that. Either the receiver gets it most of the time or no one does. Well, let's see who gets it this time. Second down. Milanovic. Forced out. Forced to throw it away. The pressure was coming. And he just had to get rid of it. Chris Ward drew a bead on Milanovic. See Damon Dunn right here. He steps to the inside and tries to fade it to the outside. Dwayne Hawthorne does an excellent job, excellent job of forcing him out, and not letting him turn back around and look for the ball. Sometimes if a receiver is going to run a fade route, you want him to, to come down inside a little bit more so he has more room to the sideline to fade. On that play, it didn't look like he had a whole lot of room to work with. So the three wide receivers lined up at the right. Shea on the draw, he stopped on third down, inside the one. Good job, D. Decision time again nice for the Berlin Thunder. Central McClellan, I think it was, that made the stop. I saw Tabidi Davis hopping around over there like uh, like he was open. You know, he was he was pounding and stomping his foot, so he may have felt that he was open on that play. I know, I know. The ball has been spotted just inside the two-yard line. So, 27 seconds left and the clock continuing to run. And it's make your mind up time for the Berlin Thunder. Yes, it is. Do you want to take the safe points or do you want to go for a touchdown? They're going to think about it. 
She's heading over to the sideline. And we will find out what they're going to do. It, it's 21 to 3. 21 to 6 puts us with the ball. This, exactly. What? They're going to hold on to the touchdown in the second half? Let's go. Let's go for us. For us. For us. Punch right, Ringo. Let's make a play. Let's make a play. Punch right, Ringo. I'll say what you like about Peter Voss. He certainly holds his nerve, yes, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Like I said, it's, it's a chess game now. And Peter Voss looks like he can play it well. They're going to do another bunch route like they did earlier where uh, the receiver is open on the corner pattern. You're going to have three or four receivers bunched up together. You're going to basically let, make the defenders decide who has who. Well, it's done to the top of the screen and everybody else to the bottom of the screen. Shea in the backfield and the pressure's coming on the it just had to get rid of it. Matt Fink is, well, it was John Hess, I think, just blasted his way through and the Hounds held firm. There was no further scoring in the first half, so join me after the break to see if Scotland can maintain their lead. Well, Rob Hart. We'll kick it off, Brian Shea and Damon Dunn. Well, the return men. Jim Pryor may have the lead. He's also got some injury worries mounting up. He's lost two offensive linemen, Cornell Green and Rome Douglas. They will not return. And Central McClellan, he's out as well, the defensive back. Brian Shea fields the kickoff at his eight yard line, and he's got a hole. Hurley Tarver it is that brings him down at the 36 yard line. And it's Scott Milanovic who will continue at quarterback for the Berlin Thunder. A good decision? Yeah, I think it's a great decision. I think uh, Scott Milanovic came in. He didn't really set the world on fire uh, when he came in in that first half, but he did a good job and he played solid. And I think it's a good job to go back with him. Dunn goes wide right. Anthony Ladd, who's been very quiet today, wide left with Davis in the slot. The Thunder need to put some points on the board. And Milanovic gets for Sean Jackson, who is chopped down by Phil Glover and will lose a yard. That's a great play by Glover. When you read it, you got to get out there and make the tackle, and that's what he did. It's one thing we talked about earlier. If you're a linebacker, you have to be able to tackle in the open field. Right here, Glover reads it, gets down there low, chops him down, and that's a good play. Man who was on the Tennessee Titans Super Bowl roster and has been allocated here from Nashville. Second down, the pitch back is to Jackson. Jackson looks to try and turn the corner, and they strung him out and read it all the way. Rashid Simmons will be credited oh. with the tackle. There'll be no off. gain. It'll be third and long. That's a great job for the defensive line. When the, when, when the running back's running, you want to string him out to the sideline. You want to get him running uh, side to side. You don't want him running upfield. That time, they did a great job. They stuffed it up the middle. He had to keep going towards the sideline. He never could turn it up. They come and make the tackle. The game is full of great east-west runners isn't it it's the north-south runners that take it down yeah the north-south runners are the ones that take it to the end zone third and long trips right milanovic will throw flushed out now he's got some time and they're after him again and he somehow stays on his feet and eventually it's antonio dingle that trips him up he was running for his life there, <laughs> Scott Milanovic. Yes, he was. He was being bounced around like a pinball and uh, he did a great job. He kept his feet. He drops back. Uh, the Claymore line comes in there as usual. They, they've been flushing these guys out all day. Chris Ward flushes them out. Milanovic is running around. And at this point, like you said, you're running for your life. Ward actually had to go at him twice there. Had to go at him twice. And it was Dingle that eventually tripped him up. That's what it feels like to have a pack of dogs <laughs> <in> your heels. <laughs> that is correct. Mormon goes for the conventional punt this time. Gibson makes a complete mess of that. And it's been recovered by the Thunder. And Richard Yancey, it is the hero last week. This Berliner, well, that's two games in a row. He's proved his worth. Those are the kind of breaks you need right there. You know, the Berlin defense had to stand up. And even though that is a special team, just consider defense, it had to stand up and make a play. And that's what it did. Well, Gibson got that all wrong. He lost it in midair. There's the stutter step. And yeah, look, who's like the, look who's Johnny on the spot again, BJ. Yeah, I'm telling you, uh, you know, Yancey's there. That's what you do. You get around the ball and good things happen. And right there, the ball popped out. He's right there and he catches it in his stride. I'll tell you what, 
last week and this week. The ball just took a perfect bounce into his hand. Well, it was an 80-yard fumble return that proved to be the game winner last week for Richard Yancey and the Thunder. A young 21-year-old from Berlin. Another big play from him. And it gives the Thunder first down, and Milanovic with more opportunities, and he'll take off, and he won't get much. And that ball is loose. Now, who's got that? The Claymores are saying they've got it. No official ruling yet. Oh, this would be a disaster for Berlin if they fumble this and give it away. No, they've hung on to it. The Thunder have somehow hung on to that. But they're skating on very thin ice now, the Berlin Thunder. You see Milanovic drops back. He doesn't see anyone, decides to just get a few positive yards. It's Jabbar Threets that Jabbar forces Threets the comes fumble. In. They're lucky they got that one back. Second down and eight. On the ground again, Brian Shea trying to work his way through there. He doesn't get much. Matt Finkis, middle linebacker, with a lot of help, made the stop there. I tell you, Berlin can come up with a touchdown right here. It'll completely change the game. It will. You come out early on, you get a fumble. Slots over left. Good Slots field position. Left. You come out and score trade. a touchdown right here. Slots now your team left. is hyped Shallow up again. Trade. They're ready. They're fired up. And, you know, it'll be a different ball game. Well, the tight end, Tywin Mitchell, has checked out of the lineup. Robert Scott, an additional wide receiver, checks in. So they go with that three receivers to one side formation that Peter Vass favors. Anthony Ladd is alone on the other side to the top of the screen. Shea in the backfield. Third and six, trying to draw him offside. Milanovic feels the heat, dingles after him again. It's incomplete. And decision time again, and they're sending on the punting unit. And in fact, Jarrett Holmes is coming on, the kicker as well. Once again, the Scotland line just comes right through there. Dingle busts through the line, and he's chasing Milanovic. And Milanovic does a good job just getting around and getting outside. Speaking of Dingle, he wanted to say hello to his mother back in North Carolina to tell her he's been behaving. Yes, he's been a very, very good guy. Well, can Jarrett Holmes be a good guy here from 34 yards? The kick's on its okay, way, and here, Holmes has sliced it, hooked it, and done everything you can do wrong with it. The Thunder didn't need that. The Claymore certainly did. They continue to lead it 21-3 here at Murrayfield. Well, can the Claymores carry on enjoying themselves? Aaron Stecker is enjoying bouncing off tacklers. He eventually is stopped by Richard Yancey after a nine-yard gain. That'll bring up second Allen Shores. Typical Stecker, just keep your legs moving, keep, keep your legs pumping, keep driving up the middle, and you end up with positive yards. And he's really impressed me, you know, every game I've seen him play. Oh, man, allocated here from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He says this is so much better than being a tackle dummy against the best defense <laughs> in the league. Well, I can understand that. Yeah. And he picks up first down yardage, working behind his blockers, showing some patience. Testing the ball. I think that's what's great for a lot of the players over here. You, know, you actually get to come and play in game time situations. You're going to learn 10 times more playing in a game time situation than you will be, you know, sitting on the bench somewhere, even if it's a, the national, I mean, the, the Super Bowl champs or not. It's always better to be playing. Well, it doesn't, playing. Look, doesn't look very happy going off to the side, though. It's not shaken up, but uh, you've got to feel sorry for the guy on the practice squad of the Buccaneers last year and going <laughs> off against that defense in practice. Yeah, that's. Blue you're a guinea pig. First down. Not much okay, going we're on done, there. man. We're done. Well, Stecker may be from Tampa Bay. Kevin Daft is allocated here from Tennessee. He was on their Super Bowl squad as the third stringer. He's behind McNair and O'Donnell. Those jobs are pretty locked up. And really, it's a straight shot between him and Billy Volek for that third job, you would think. Yeah, it is. And, you know, the, the benefit of being a third guy uh, with two quarterbacks like that is you get to learn from the best. Steve McNair and Neil, Neil O'Donnell, they've both been to the Super Bowl. They know how to play the game. You get to learn from them. Bad thing is you never get to step on the field and try it. Unless you come here, of course. And Ben Snell turns the corner, shows a good turn of pace, blocks his way past one tackler. Richard Hogan's it is eventually that stops him. I think he just ran right through Kevin Peoples there. 
The man whose fumble led to that touchdown, that controversial one last week. It looks like he's trying to get it back right here. He takes the ball, goes straight up the middle, doesn't have to make much of a move, breaks to the outside. He got Hogan's in pursuit, and Peoples comes up there and hits him low. Hogan's jumped on the top, and, you know, that's a nice, solid game right there. Well, he was very unhappy with himself last week, Ben Snell, after coughing that one up that Yancey returned 80 yards. The ball is in the territory of the Berlin Thunder and Hogan's and Clark coming up and converging on Ben Snell there and he'll get less than a yard. That was a solid collision, I think we can I say. I would definitely say that. I tell you, talking about last week's game, what made it even harder for the Claymores to take is Ben Snell didn't get hit when he fumbled the ball. He just fumbled. He was running, the ball popped out of his hand, and then the whole fiasco started. And so that made it even a little bit harder to take than just, you know, getting hit and fumbling. Second down. Daft will look to throw. Oh. And are they going to rule that one complete? No, they're not. They were looking for Damon Gibson, but it definitely took a, a hop. And there's a flag down in the offensive backfield as well. Defense. Hey. Defensive captain, please. Hey. Mark Bolts is our official. The home side Hold it. Number 65, offense, 10 yard penalty, repeat, second down. That's Scott Curry who joined the team last week. Allocated here from the Green Bay Packers. He'd stayed in the United States to help his wife as she gave birth to their child. There he goes right there, and then I tell you what, you just can't really blame the guy. He just got off the plane about 10 minutes ago and he's already starting. You know, and sometimes when the, when the outside backer lineman gets a jump on you, you have to grab him. Cedric Clark he grabbed. So second down again. Uh, not much done there. Greg Wilkins read that play all the way. Stayed at home. And that's going to bring up third and long. And these defensive tackles of the Thunder, they get overlooked, but they make plays, don't they? They do make plays. And he did a good job of reading that one. I'll tell you what happens now. These linemen are getting better and better, feeling the screens and feeling, you know, plays like that. It used to be back in the day, they'd sit there and read it and they'd have to figure out everything. Now they just get a feel like, okay, this guy didn't block me the way he should have. Therefore, this is going to happen, and they react to it well. Bear, bear. Well, third down, and oh, they get 23 for Daft. And the pressure comes, and Daft goes deep, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Scott Cooper. Chris Cummins had matched him step for step. So defensively, the Thunder have made some solid adjustments. The punting unit back on. That's a great play right there. Daft steps back and just lets it go. Cummings running with Cooper, stride for stride, sticks his hand in there, knocks it down. Great play. And Cummings is a pretty fast guy, as you can see there. And Scott Cooper is known for many things, but speed, not one of them. 10.10, that's not bad. That's pretty, pretty quick, that's isn't it? That's okay. Vince. Caldwell. What's up? Is the return man. Ballantyne gets off one of his better ones. That's a beauty that's going to go what, straight oh. in the end zone. Woo. Wow. <laughs> But Scott Milanovic is on in relief. And the Thunder need to get things moving in a hurry. Play action. Milanovic looks in the direction of Dunn. He's got him. Well, they made that look very easy, working Dwayne Hawthorne all the way to the 41-yard line. This is Dunn and Hawthorne one-on-one -on -one again. And this is the matchup they've wanted. Right here. That's Comes off the field, comes off the, the line, he just runs straight. I think Hawthorne read something different because uh, Dunn didn't make a move. He just ran straight downfield, no hit. Nice pass over his outside shoulder. Good for 39 yards for the Berlin big play man, who's been kept pretty quiet by Hawthorne over these two games. Now Milanovic runs into a bunch of trouble. Crunch, Chris Ward got him. Chris Ward, the quiet, mature leader of the Hounds. But definitely a leader. You see just play after play. I mean, uh, Milanovic is back there running for his life. Chris Ward, actually, on that play, was the beneficiary of uh, a good rush by other people. He rushed well himself, but uh, the quarterback was pushed into the middle, and he was standing right there to make the tackle. And that's how guys play off each other. That, that's what makes a good line. 
Second down. Maranovic will throw again. He's got a man once again. Uh, that's complete once again to Dunn, working on Hawthorne. They continue to have their little duel. Yeah, that's how you have to throw the out route. The out, out route has to be a bullet. You know, it can't afford to float whatsoever. You have Dunn right here. He runs down, he's matched up against Hawthorne again. He runs, runs down the field, just makes an out route. The ball's delivered right there before he gets to the sideline. Good play. Nice zip on the ball. Nice play, but it's coming back. Holding. Number 60, offense, 10 yard penalty, repeat, second down. Brian Walsh is the center who'd never played offensive line before this season began. The Kansas City Chiefs sent him over here and they said, you know something, we think you're a natural snapper. This is him right here. You see the ball snap, he just, uh, he grabs the jersey and just pulls him down. So the center assessed, that play comes back. And it's second on a long way now for Milanovic. And the pressure comes again. He dumps it off to Shea. And Shea can't get past Dwayne Hawthorne, who made the first contact. And Hurley Tarver it was that finished him off. That's one thing you hate as a coach, to go from uh, positive territory, which is, you know, in your opponent, inside your opponent's 50, back into negative ter territory. And uh, that's what happened on that play. And I'm sure Berlin right now wants to get that positive territory back. Oh. The Berlin Thunder defense might have slowed this Scotland offense. But on the other duel, Berlin's offense is having real trouble with the Hounds. Milanovic tests them again with Dunn and Hawthorne. No flags. Hawthorne and Dunn were stride for stride on that one. It's a good play by both. Dunn made it, Dunn ran a good route. A little hitch in his step. Straight down the field, Hawthorne was with him step for step, just a good play. So it brings up fourth down, and uh, having been caught once on the fake, I'm sure the Claymores will be ready for it this time. Brian Mormon is in, Dion Mitchell is deep. And what happens this time? He's going to go again, yeah. would you believe that? They're going to go again. And he gets oh, past nice Ben Snow, and that's a great effort from Brian Mormon. He beat two tacklers. Wow. Boy, that's living dangerously for a kicker. It really is. You can't ask for much more than that. Not at all. Not quite good enough, but there was a heart-stopping moment here for Claymore's fans. Yep. He just takes the snap, runs to the sideline. Looks like he's going to run out of bounds for a second. He cuts it back. Daft fires on Romain Allen. Should have had a piece of that one, and it's incomplete. Yeah, those, those are the passes you have to have. I mean, it's a simple catch, and you got to make that catch. You really do. I mean, that's the kind of thing that gives your team momentum. It may just be a two or three yard catch, but it gives your team momentum. Both these offenses have just become bogged down after that, yeah, uh, after that first quarter. An explosive first quarter, and really nothing since. Tire has good protection, looks deep for Damon Gibson, got him! There's some offense, touchdown Scotland! No flags! <laughs> 65 yards, Kevin Daft to Damon Gibson, he worked Troy Saunders for another Scotland touchdown. I tell you what, it makes this play happen right here. You see Aaron Stecker, besides being a great runner and great receiver, Guy doesn't mind mixing it up on the block. See the rush comes in, he chops down the defensive end and gives, it, gives Daft plenty of time to throw it. When the quarterback has plenty of time to throw it, you're usually gonna find a man wide open downfield. And that play, you see it. Damon Gibson, he got a step on the defensive back and that was it. Throw pass. All right, watch. We're done. Tax on done. the extra point. And the Scottish Claymores, well, you do get the feeling they lock this one up pretty tight in the first quarter, and surely that big play from Damon Gibson, his first touchdown of the season. It's tough to see how they're going to lose from here. Yeah, just when we were talking about everyone being stalled now and not having done anything since the first quarter, they come back and explode on that play. That was just a great play. I mean, the, the, the Damon Gibson got behind the defender. He was wide open. Lose your right. 
kicks it off. Dunn fields at the 10. Dunn can be dangerous. Tremaine Allen tries to string him out, and they do manage to stop him at the 23-yard line. Hurley Tarver it was that nailed him. And the Berlin Thunder, well, with four minutes and 19 seconds left here in the third quarter, they're, they're in jail and can't find the key right now. Yeah. And Ed Edinburgh is a tough place to get out of jail. Yeah, you don't want to be in jail in Edinburgh, and I'll tell you what, that's where they are right now, and uh, the Claymores are definitely keeping them there. And by the way, since we're here, you mind me asking you, what is a Claymore? A Claymore is a big two-edged sword. Big two-edged sword? Yeah. Okay. But you need both hands to wield. Not just your average pocket knife. No, 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 no. no. Okay. It's a, it's a pretty fearsome instrument. When you mean business. So Milanovic, who's felt some pretty blunt instruments himself in this ball game, finds his intended receiver, Damon Dunn. And that is the claim. Well, there you see on the shield. That's oh, a two-edged that... sword. Oh, okay. It's a okay. little bit, little bit stylized. I mean, they weren't that kind of fat at the top. You know, they were, you know, nobody would have been able to lift the things up. But, but it's, uh, it's definitely you get the principle. Definitely something you use when you mean business. Yeah. Okay. You're not coming in and being friendly if you're waving a Claymore yeah. around. Well, they're definitely wheeling that Claymore today on the field against the Thunder. Second down. They go back on the ground. Oh, Sean yeah. Jackson is wrapped up from behind by Phil Glover, and he'll be short. Well, they've got a couple of Tennessee Titans, the Scottish Claymores. Kevin Daft is making waves at quarterback, but Phil Glover, an outside linebacker, is uh, certainly strengthening his claims of... Uh, landing a job when he gets back to Nashville. Yeah, he's done a nice, solid job, and uh, you put, when you're on a team like the Tennessee Titans, you, of course, positions are going to be hard to come by because you have a, a really stacked team, but he's done a great job of playing out here, and he's making a name for himself. Oh, he's got flags all over the place. No confusion on the sideline. One marker says first down, one says fourth down. So let's see if we can sort, sort this one out. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 76, five yard penalty, repeat, first down. That's Grant Garrett. So we'll replay the down, which is first down. I oh mean, you know, I know you keep saying it, but they have to get some points on the board right now. You know, if not, this game may be over in the third quarter. They're locked up, locked up tight. Right there, and it's, and it's the hounds that are the jailers right now. You see, he sees the rush coming in, and, and Grant Garrett just jumps a couple seconds before the play. First down, 15. Milanovic throws, oh. he gets hit as he throws, and it's oh. almost picked off by Michael Murray again. It was Glover and Taylor that were converging on Milanovic. Now it's going to be second down of 15. Melange business felt the heat all day. Every time he drops back, people are in his face. Right here, you, you see it happen once again. He, he drops back, barely has time to move, and Glover comes in. He's right there in his face. Dangerous play. McElmurray almost comes up with another interception. So second down. Pressure comes again, and Milanovic manages to get rid of it, but it was almost a pick straight into the hands of Ryan Taylor. But they're just bringing the house on every down now, the Claymores. Yeah, they are. Yeah. It's one of these things when you, you, know, you have something that's working, you might as well keep it working. You see Taylor right here. Ball snaps, he reads it, he drops back in coverage. Great read, jumps up there, almost comes up with an interception. That would have been a fantastic interception sure if you got it. Have to, be well, able to, have to be able to read if you're a linebacker. Well, Moore, the defensive coordinator, is thinking aggressive here. Third down and 15. The Thunder need this. Milanovic throws oh, in the direction of Robert oh. Scott. It's broken up by Hurley Tarver. And it's incomplete. An incomplete pass and almost picked off once again. And Dion Mitchell retreats for the punting uh, situation. Matchup. Go downfield. He runs down the sideline, and uh, I'll tell you what—that was that was close to being picked off. That's Something you, you don't want to happen right now. If Brian Mormon runs here, I'm buying you dinner tonight. Man. I, knew, I knew that was safe. 
And it takes going, a bounce and a roll out at the 29 yard line of the Scottish Claymores. The Claymores had to punt on their next possession, so let's rejoin the action on the Thunder's ensuing possession. Milanovic uh -oh, feels oh, some heat shit. and just has to get rid of it, but he had a wide open. Damon Dunn there. I think Dunn was about as wide open as a, as a receiver can get. And he could have got that ball to him because although Hess was applying yeah. some heat, this was a possibility here for Berlin. Once again, once again, Milanovic steps back and uh, the heat comes in there. You see right now, Damon Dunn comes in five yard, does a slant and go. And Corey, well, Corey Blackwell bit on it and Damon Dunn was wide open. He's still running now if he makes yes, that catch. without a doubt. Instead, it's second down. Oh. Somehow that ball's passed oh. around and it's picked oh, yeah. off. It finally got picked. Ryan Taylor. And Berlin's afternoon of disaster surely now complete. All turnovers are bad, but that's a really bad place to have a turnover. See right here, Milanovic drops back and once again, no time to throw. Ball bounces around and when the ball's up there in the air like that, if you're on offense, you just want to smack the ball to the ground. You know, Taylor concentrated, he focused on the ball and got the, got the ball while it was bobbled around, but you know, on offense, you see the ball popping around like that, you have to just put your hands up there and smack it to the ground. Well, that was a linebacker special because John Hess, it was that tipped it up in the air, and Ryan Taylor, who eventually got it under control, and it brings Marcus Crandall back out. And Crandall will throw on first down, and he's got the big man, Ricky Brady, who's already got two touchdowns. Joe Phipps prevented a third one. Such a reliable big target, Ricky Brady. Yeah, he is a big guy, I tell you what. He's right here, and he's, he's a big guy, he can run. He just releases to the inside, comes right back to the outside. Phipps is on him and lets him go a little bit, and uh, all you need is a little separation in this league, and guys are gonna hit the pass. But it's first and goal. Hey, what is this? And Crandall gives it to Aaron Stecker. Stecker runs into trouble and bounces away and goes in. There's a flag. But if it goes against Berlin, that's another Scotland touchdown. Yeah, I think that's going to be against Berlin. Excellent job by Stecker. Calm, relaxed. Bounce in there. You get stuffed the first time. You bounce right back out. Touchdown. It's against the Claymores is the preliminary signal here. Really? I don't think the stadium PA has picked this one up yet, but they will. Jim Kreiner knows it. Personnel, personnel. Illegal motion, number 42. And it's moving forward prior to the snap. Tremaine Five Allen. Penalty. Repeat, first down. Well, the Berlin players must have seen that because they reacted to it, and I thought they jumped offside, so. They must have seen Allen move. So chalk that one off. And it's first and goal this time from the six. And the Thunder take a timeout. This is a 30 second timeout. Well, they're in a situation at Claymore's where they're, they're pretty much home free, barring some unbelievable collapse. But the, Jim Kreiner would have liked that touchdown just to make this thing absolutely safe. Yeah, I think so. Uh, you, know, you never can predict the outcome of a game. And with this much time left on the clock, anything can happen. It really can. So I think, you know, Kreiner would love to get this touchdown to put it even more out of reach. Bunch right, 14 trap. Okay. Yep. No, they said it was 42, it was Tremaine. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're going to do a, a basic running play up the middle. They're going to run sure. a trap. They just said 42, so they didn't know. So they're basically just going to hand it to um, hand it to Stecker up the middle and let him work with it. So first down from the six. 14 trap, plus this through there. Stecker in the backfield, Stecker gets the carry. Get Stecker dives his way through, touchdown Scotland. Wow. <laughs> That's Stecker for you. That's how it plays. Stecker sets up in the back. He's, he gets the ball, reads the hole, stays calm, bursts up through the middle, one-on-one -on -one with Kevin Peoples at the end and just takes him into the end zone. You know, right there, Kevin Peoples basically had nothing he could do. Well, they chalked a one-yard runoff. The very next play, Stecker in from six. And 
Rob Hart can make it a 35 to 3 ball game, which he does. The Thunder had to punt on their next possession, so let's pick up the action on the Claymore's following drive. They say the sun shines on the righteous. And Jim Kreiner, the Scotland coach, must feel pretty righteous about now. He has to feel righteous right now with this lead. And the sun is definitely on his side of the field. And there's nothing but shadow and darkness on the other side. Roel Blenman, the Londoner, checks into the game. Number 21 at wide receiver. Everyone getting a workout now for the Claymores. Crandall gives it to Stecker, and Stecker dances and jukes, and this is where he can be so dangerous. Zebby Lethridge eventually on the stop, but not after, not until he gained another seven yards. This is what allows Stecker to be so, so effective. You know, he takes the ball, calm, almost, almost comes to a dead stop. Cuts back the other way, cuts again, explodes through. I mean, that, that's just a good piece of running right there. Very calm. Well, they only have two running backs on their books, the Scottish Claymores. So Stecker has to do some work, although he checks out now, and Ben Snell, the other running back, checks in. Tate goes in motion, and Snell gets the carry, and Snell yes. powers his way through and says, hey, it's not just about number 27, you know. Lamont Green eventually stopping him, but the Berlin Thunder are breaking badly here. Yeah, it looks like the... Uh Looks like the Berlin defense is almost, I'm not going to say they've given up, but I think they feel beaten down right now. Everything the Claymores do is working, and, uh, you know, Snell just busts right up the middle, and, you know, no one touches them. And then when they do touch me, he drags them with them. Well, the Claymores' biggest ever victory was 48-14 in Berlin last year, a margin of victory of 34 points. They're at 32 already, if my maths is correct. Snell again, and Snell looking to try and find the hole. Kevin Peoples stayed with him and pushes him out of bounds. And a flag comes flying in late. It looks like a frustration penalty right there. And Kevin Peoples is certainly frustrated. And he has good reason to be frustrated. This has been a tough afternoon. Snell takes the ball, and he's a, he's, a, he's a big back. He goes up the middle, su everyone sucks in, he bounces it to the outside, gives Peoples a stiff arm, and uh, he gets out of bounds and gives him a little shove. Mm, yeah, that's... Uh, that gets a flag every time. If you're slightly out of bounds, that's not too big a deal, but it looked like he was a couple steps out of bounds. Sorry, rough. 56 on the defense, oh. half the distance to the goal. That's Cedric Clark. First down. Well, wow. Oh, well. I thought it was. Um, Either way, it's 15 yards yeah, against the that's Thunder. For sure. See, people's oh, right here, and they're just one on one battling each other. And, um, and I. Well, I don't yeah, see what yeah, Cedric yeah, Clark yeah. did there, but anyway. <laughs> okay. It's a first down of Ben Snell inside the tent. He gets pushed back. But will be given another three yards. That'll bring up second down. You know, a lot of these offensive players in this league, uh, one thing they have to learn to use is their moves instead of just their speed. A lot of guys come out of college and it's all speed. You know, I'm the fastest guy. I can run past you. I can run through you. And, and when you get into the pros, you have to learn. You have to learn that other guys are fast too. So you need to, you know, you need to do something else to get those guys off track. And what it is, is to be able to uh, slow down your speed, then burst when you need it. Well, who's got the burst here? Snell is in the backfield. Snell, the ball carries. Snell Tuck it. trying to burst past Chris Cummins, who makes a good open field stop. And that's going to bring up third down. That's the speedster, the track star, Chris Cummins. This is a solid one-on-one -on -one tackle right there. And allocated here from the Detroit Lions. Yeah, I think defensive backs have uh, sort of gotten away from the art of tackling these days. It's all become coverage. Not and, like uh, in your day, hey, DJ. Oh, hey, hey, we used to pound <laughs> it in there. It was all about tackling back then, you know, way back in the 70s. <laughs> Tate goes in motion. Will oh, throw. shit. Gets hit as he throws. Snell's got the ball. And Snell fights for extra yardage and will be close to first down yardage, depending on where they spot that. Johnny Caldwell, the man pushing him out of bounds. Jonathan Brown was there too. Jonathan Brown comes off the end. 
Crandall takes the snap, drops back. You see Brown coming in on your picture. Crandall gets it off just in time. Snell catches the ball, just a little flare pass out to the side, and he does the rest. At some point, you just got to use your power and go for that first down. The chains coming on. Hey, Ben! It's the first time we've seen the chains on a Scottish Claymore game this year. What are the chains going to say? Sure. Huh? I thought it was closer than that. Sending in Rip, Rob Hart, the kicker. 96 slam. Rip, 96 slam. So fourth down and less than a yard. On this play, it looks like they're just going to try to uh, spread the wide receivers out. Do a quick slant pattern to the middle, which is uh, you take two or three steps off the line and just do a hard slant to the middle of the field. Yeah, he was on the. And try to hit him before the. Um, Try to hit him before the receiver can, before the defensive back can react. Uh, actually, they're going to pull it back in now and probably just do a running play. From the eye formation, fourth down yeah. from the three. Crandall get in there, Ben. Gives it to Stecker. Stecker ben. looks to work his blockers. Does he get in? Yes, he does. Touchdown, Scotland. It's a route now. Well, sometimes when you pass in these situations, it seems like you're trying to uh, you know, just run up the score. You don't want to. You really don't want to do that. So a running play is better. I mean, you can't stop the guys from playing. You know, if the guys are playing and they're just running, you know, basic plays and they're scoring, you really can't help that. Stecker takes the ball, calm and relaxed as usual. Cuts it back, goes up the middle, touchdown. You know, a lot of a lot of coaches, uh, when you have a lead by this much, you're reluctant to throw at the end of the game. What about this? Aaron Stecker goes three games without scoring a rushing touchdown, and here in game four, that's his third rushing touchdown. Incredible. And his wife, Cara, back in Florida, who gives oh, him such a hard time. Even <laughs> she must be happy she's with it. She's got to be happy. He told me that Cara was ecstatic last week, and I tell you what, she's got to be ecstatic this week. And so must the Claymore's 42 to 3. Let's wrap it up here, as there were no further scores in the game. A tough battle, but the toughest player on the field today gives us his thoughts. Come on, congratulations. Now, how, how crucial were those three interceptions in the first quarter? Oh, those were huge. You know, we, we turned the ball back over to our, our, our offense, and uh, it gave them an opportunity to move the ball up and down the field. Hey, Dewan, uh, this is DJ. I tell you what, watching you out there, you, you, know, you were very confident in your breaks. You were very confident in your reads. And we talked last week about you, know, you playing alongside Deion Sanders and things you learned from him. I saw a little bit out there today. Was that the little Dion out there? Oh, yeah. I, I wanted to give him a little something, you know. I, and un unfortunately, I didn't play a good game last week, although I felt, you know. So I wanted to come out and make a little statement. 